subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Ok so now we look at this question on step response. So firstly we see that what is step response. See if the input of the system if the input to the discrete time system is unit step function then we say that the obtained output is going to be our step response right. If this is my LTI system and I am applying unit step signal as input then the output that I am obtaining is the step response. So what can I say? I can say that SN is going to be UN convolution HN. HN is the impulse response of the system. Now if I just write it in terms of the convolution sum this is going to be Right, since this is commutative I can uh, form this reversal. So now uh, we have seen this many times this step signal u of n minus k is going to have values are going to have samples from k is equal to minus infinity to n h k right. So this is what my s n is going to be. Now just if you just observe I can write this as I can change the limits of summation from k is equal to minus infinity to n minus 1 and and write this sample separately sample at k is equal to n I am writing separately. Now see when the limits were from minus infinity to n we say that this was Sn. Now since the limit are from minus infinity to n minus 1 I can say that this is Sn minus 1. So if ever I need to find out impulse response Hn in terms of step response what can I say? impulse response Sn is going to be difference of the step responses Hn is going to be Sn minus N minus 1 Sn minus 1 which is also which can also be seen from this equation since del N is un minus un minus 1 therefore response of del N which is Hn is going to be Sn minus Sn minus 1 okay we could have seen this from this equation also uh, anyways we saw this uh, in this way right. So this is how we are check we can obtain impulse response for system using its step response. Now look at this question they have given you the imp uh, step response of the system here Sn equal to alpha to the power n un and they are asking you to find out the impulse response. So as you know impulse response of the system is going to be Sn minus Sn minus 1 right. Now just put the values in this equation this is going to be alpha to the power n un minus alpha to the power n minus 1 un minus 1. Now just see what am I doing is I am just adding and subtracting one term from my side ok just adding and subtracting one term by my wish. Now I am just if I just rearrange these terms what can I write? Fine, now you know that un minus un minus 1 is going to be delta n. This is going to be alpha to the power n un minus 1 minus alpha to the power n minus 1 u n minus 1. Right, now using the multiplication property of this delta function, value of alpha to the power n at n is equal to 0 is 1. So this is going to be del n plus if I take alpha to the power n common, I am going to obtain 1 minus Right, you can uh, simplify this by multiplying this with alpha or leave it as it is. So this is going to be our impulse response. So if ever you are given the step response of a system you can obtain impulse response by using the difference equation and in case of continuous time systems by differentiating the step response of the system. Right, so this is how we are obtaining impulse response and this is the relation between impulse response and step response of a system. Fine. Similarly, if you want to obtain step response of a system using its impulse response, what are you going to do? You are going to perform summation operation. Okay, Sn is going to be this one. Sn is going to be summation of the impulse response from minus infinity to n. Right, so this is the relation between step response and impulse response of a discrete time LTI system. Fine. Right, so uh, we see that for a system to be memoryless, output and input can be related only by equation of this form. So if I talk about the impulse response, what is the Hn going to be? Hn is going to be form of 
k delta n right because when we are providing the input as impulse function then the output that we obtain we are calling that as impulse response. So what can I say if h naught if h at n naught is not 0 not 0 for n naught not 0 that is if this value of impulse response occurs for any other value of n other than 0 other than 0 then we say then system is going to have memory system has memory that is impulse response of the system should have value only for n is equal to 0 should occur should have only a single sample occurring at n is equal to 0 should not have any sample at any other value of n okay this is how we are judging memory of a system using the impulse response of the system now next if you want to see stability of the system next we want to check stability of system so we have seen this, you have seen this in the continuous time domain also we are going to see this again. What can I write yn as yn is written as summation of k from minus infinity to infinity xk or ok I am making a shift in x, x n minus k right. Now we know that the input is bounded, input is bounded means mod of xk mod of xk is bounded with some value bounded by some value that is it is having a finite value then what is going to happen if you just apply if I try to find out mod of yn mod of yn this is going to be complete thing complete this thing is going to come inside the mod right and now using Schwarz inequality what we can say when they when we are taking mod of these signals of these kind signals in multiplication we can just separate this we can take mod out inside and this is going to be mod of hk into mod of xn minus k right this is what mod of yn is. Now you know that this signal is bounded see if xk is bounded that is if xk is having a finite value then shifted version of xk even if you are providing a shift to this uh, signal xk even if you are reversing it it is not going to affect its value right it is not going to change its value. So even this signal is going to be bounded. So now, now what can I say for yn to be bounded that is for yn to be finite what do I need I need summation k summation of k from minus infinity to infinity mod of hk should be bounded should be finite that is this impulse response of the system should be uh, summable should be absolutely summable since this signal since this signal was already a finite valued signal already bounded signal so the bounding uh, if this uh, yn is having a finite value or not depends on absolutely summability of this impulse response if this is absolutely summable that is if mod of hk is absolutely summable for all values of k then we say that the system is a stable system right the last thing that we need to check is causality of the system causality of system now how are we doing this so to check causality of system we say that its impulse response should not occur for negative values of n or we can say that hn should be 0 for all n less than 0 if this system does not respond to values of input to all inputs applied before n is equal to 0 we say that the system is causal right that is what uh, that is how we are defining causality of a system causal system is one which does not respond to events that occur before n is equal to 0 right so if impulse response of a system is 0 for n less than 0 we say that the system is going to be causal right now what is y n is going to be in that case now y n as we know is summation from k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x k h n minus k or summation from k is equal to minus infinity to infinity h k x n minus k right now what is this summation going to become since it involves function of shifting and reversal we know that this function is going to occur and we know that h n is a causal signal so this is going to become this is going to become limits are going to change from minus infinity to n we have discussed this kind of signal a lot of times so i am not taking it again you can just sketch it and see that this is going to occur for uh, values of k from minus infinity to n 
Now this signal is going to occur for values of k greater than 0 since this is a causal signal. So this is how this is how my convolution summation is going to change. Okay. Now, now I am making a modification. Now, if I say, if I say that my input is also a causal signal, that is, if xn is also causal, xn is also causal implies that, implies that xn is also 0 for n less than 0. Then what happens to output? Then what happens to yn? See already limits for this first summation were from minus infinity to n. Now this xk also occurs for values of k greater than 0 only. Then the limits are going to modify and become from k is equal to 0 to n. xk hn minus k. What are the limits going to be in this case? Now this signal is going to occur from values of k from minus infinity to n. But this signal occurs for k is equal to 0 to infinity. So I can write limits are going to be. Right? So what can I say? If my system as well as input are causal, if both of them are causal, limits for, limits for summation in this convolution are going to be from 0 to n. Either you uh, apply commutative property or not, you are going to obtain limits from 0 to n only if system as well as input are causal. Fine. So this is how we can check properties of a system using its impulse response hn. Okay, so now we are going to look at uh, two problems how we are checking these properties of the system you are looking at the impulse response. Right, so look at the given question. They have given the input output relation which is defined by this equation and they are asking you to check the causality of the system. So we have just looked that we can judge causality, stability, memory, everything of a system, all the properties of a system by looking at its impulse response. So what can I do? I can just find out the impulse response of the system and then check causality of the system. So what is impulse response? Impulse response is output of the system when the applied input is unit impulse signal. So I can replace yn with hn if my xn if the input is impulse signal. Fine using multiplication property what is going to happen I can replace this k with minus 1. So this is going to become 2 to the power minus 1 minus n into del k plus 1. Now since this this uh, 2 to the power minus 1 minus n is independent of the summation it is not having any k variable can just take this out this is going to be 2 n plus 1 summation from k is equal to minus infinity to n del of k plus 1. Now uh, I am not very sure of this summation so what can I say uh, let I am just replacing this variable with one independent variable so that I can just sum this signal okay. So what uh, what is going to happen this is going to be n plus 1. Limits are going to change, right? Lower limit for this m is also going to be minus infinity because if you put k is equal to minus infinity here, you are again going to obtain minus infinity only. Upper limit is going to be n plus 1 and this is going to be del m. Now we know that integration of this del m, right? This del m area under impulse signal is 1 if point of occurrence of impulse signal lies between the limits of summation that is this is going to be this one if if m is greater than n plus 1 right if, if if n plus 1 is greater than 0 if n plus 1 is greater than 0 why because this impulse occurs at m is equal to 0 right the, okay this limits are for m occurs for m is equal to 0 if this n plus 1 is greater than 0 that is this impulse signal is included then this is going to have value 1 if this is not included it is going to have value 0 so what can I say to signify this what can I write this as I can write this as u of n plus 1 now you know that this u of n plus 1 is going to start from n is equal to minus 1 or I can say that if I find h of minus 1, h of minus 1, that is if I just place minus 1 in place of n everywhere, this is going to be 1 into u of 0. Now, h of minus 1 is not 0, that is this impulse response is not 0 for values, hn is not 0 
for values of n less than 0 c this occurred for value of n equal to minus 1 which means that this system is not causal non causal system right because we know the condition for causality is impulse response of the system should be 0 for all values of n less than 0 that is how we are checking causality of the system. So, this given system is going to be non causal. Now, we are going to check stability of a system. <coughs> 